Brian Little. <laughs> podcast on Applied Tactical Training Academy, and we're coming at you live from the bunker here. This is where we're going to be doing a lot of our video reviews and uh, where we'll be doing the podcast episodes. So welcome to the bunker. <laughs> we're about to have some fun. This is a cool place. I love it here. Awesome. Now, what we're going to be talking about today specifically is the Springfield M1A rifle, and we have a variant of it here in this case. Uh, this was sent to us by Springfield. And me just being a gun guy, I've always been a fan of the M1A. I think it's just an iconic type of gun. And John, having tons of experience in the military, uh, can really kind of tell you what the practical uses of this type of firearm would be. So why don't we just jump right into it. John, you want to go ahead and uh, absolutely pull the gun out here? I love this thing. I can absolutely love this M14 M1A style 308 rifle. This is my favorite ever. Awesome. Now, with what we're looking at here, this is in the Archangel, Archangel, or Archangel, I'm sorry. Archangel. This is in the Archangel stock, and it's unique in a sense compared to a lot of the other M1As that I've seen, because I didn't have a whole lot of experience with shooting these prior. I've seen them at the range, I've shot them a few times, but I've never owned my own of one of these. So, it's a nice small package. This is basically called the, the SOCOM 2 or the CQB package. And again, it's in that Archangel stock. You have some different rails and stuff like that that are attached here just for being able to attach lights to it and everything. Um, you obviously have the collapsible stock. And then you have the, the standard receiver for an M1A. And John, if you want to flip it around, you kind of show people what we're looking at here. There you go. And just so you can see, it's a SOCOM 16 CQB on there. Now, this one is unique as well because it actually came to me with the Venom Red Dot by Vortex mounted to it. And I love it on there. I've never really used a, a, a 308 rifle that was so compact with a Red Dot. Every 308 I've ever had was scoped. And this was just such a a different feel compared to what I've used in terms of rifles before. Well, to be honest, you know... You think 308 right away, you're thinking thousand yard gun. Exactly. You know? And and if you put a if you put a 10, 12, 15 power scope on this gun, you're doing yourself a disservice because this is a CQB gun, as much as any gun's ever ever, ever been built. Um, this is maybe a 300 yard gun. Okay. You, know, you can get out 500 yards, but I would feel comfortable shooting 300. But for what this is, this is maybe the coolest 300 yard gun on earth. Yeah. Right. You know. Oh yeah. Um, you know, we talked about in 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 other episodes. We talk about the 223 round. Yep. Right. This thing is super fast. It doesn't yaw within that CQB range. So when you're kicking down doors, you're putting this small little piece of lead in, in, a, in a bad guy. Okay? Yep. Or let's say, for, for more realistic, you're putting this small little piece of lead into a to a hog at, at 35 yards. Right? Yeah. Now what this gun provides is a big, you know, 165 grain 308 round. Yeah. You know, which is an outstanding round, especially coming out of this manageable rifle. Yeah. Okay. A lot more knockdown power, I guess you could say. Absolutely. It's one of the terms that you hear in the gun industry all the time where people might not exactly know how to explain that perfectly, but I think you just explained it perfectly by, by way of using that larger round for something like a hog or hunting or anything like that. Sure, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll talk about it real quick. Yeah. Uh, you know, let's say a, a, a sniper issue 308, you know, mm -hmm. that bolt's coming out of 3,600 feet per second. Yeah. Plus or minus 50. It's a good thousand yard gun all day. Mm -hmm. Now this gun's putting out because it has a short, it has this shorter barrel and it's gas operated. You're getting about let's say 25, 2600 feet per second, which is much more than enough to put a bad guy down, put a hog down at, at say 50 yards, 75 or 100 yeah. yards. You know, this is this is a good 300 yard gun, just like an AK-47. You know, you, you can get out about 300 yards. Now this gun, if you're a 125 pound dude, 
this might not be the gun for you to buy. Sure. You know, now, I mean, you're a little bit bigger. It's more manageable, and you'll see in our videos as we're shooting a gun, we had no problem transitioning with this weapon system. But it does beat you up a little bit more than a 5.56. You know? That's so, very true. So you got to put that in, in consideration. But I was, I was very, very happy with how easy this gun transitions, how easy it goes up, you know. Yeah. And with this Vortec Venom sight, this is the best sight, in my opinion, to put on this, or, or, or any kind of red dot, you know, yeah. because again, if you're putting a, if you're putting something with, you know, three, five, seven, ten power, you know, you, you don't, you don't need that. It's kind of like yeah. putting, you know, drag flats on a Cadillac. Yeah. Know? So there, there's no, there's no reason for it. So beautiful gun, beautiful setup. Uh, the handle in this particular Archangel setup makes makes the gun a lot more manageable. You'll see a lot of Solcoms and M14s uh, that don't have that handle. Mm -hmm. I, I personally like it. You know? Yeah. And. Uh, Again, as far as CQB goes, this might be the coolest gun ever ever made. Yeah, you know, uh, I joke around and say if this was 500 years ago, this is what a, a Viking would carry. This, yeah, this is the equivalent of the Viking 2018 axe. Viking Axe. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is the baddest thing on earth, and uh, I had so much fun shooting it. Yeah, you had fun shooting it. Oh yeah, and uh, it, all of our clients had a blast shooting it too. This is one of the favorites, and this was between <coughs> a wide range of different people that we have out on our range days. So that ranged from Older gentlemen uh, that aren't familiar with the platform, younger ladies that have never used the platform before, and every single person who shot this gun walked away smiling. <laughs> so, Police officers, yeah, uh, former military guys, former special operations guys. That you know, we, we all have a, a little piece of our heart for for these three hundred eight, these, these these Springfields. Uh, tell you a quick story. Uh, while as a sniper, I had the opportunity, a, a very rare and, and outstanding opportunity, to go to an actual. Uh, an infantry designated marksman sniper course. It, yeah. It's not a sniper course, it's a designated marksman course. And um, they shot M14s, and you know I thought it'd be kind of a cool school to go to. I jumped on it right away. It's, it's only a few months long. And uh, I learned so much about quick target acquisition and so much about that M14 rifle, I, I became a massive fan. So uh, when I got to Afghanistan, I actually got the opportunity to carry a, a similar rifle, a little bit different than this. It was more of the Solcom two, sure. Without without the handle. Was that the and, fixed uh, stock version? Yeah, the fixed well? stock Solcom yeah. two. Okay. And uh, what we needed it for is from going point point A to point B, mm -hmm. get up on a higher position, and we needed something to transition from our our bolt gun. Sure. You know, we needed a gas gun, but I wanted a gas gun that I can get up and still fight from that three hundred yards by head. Yes. You know, uh, two twenty threes are awesome. You know, five or five five six. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's a great it's a great round. But again, you you want that knockdown power. If yeah. you're a hog hunter, if you're you know if you're you know shooting something from close range, this is the perfect gun for you to shoot. Awesome. Now, one thing that I was going to ask you about too, when you were in the service <coughs> and using this rifle, one thing that I've noticed about it that I always thought was pretty cool is this very unique muzzle break, and that's obviously one of the reasons why this gun is fairly easy to handle, at least for somebody that may not be familiar with the platform. Or for somebody who is super familiar with the platform to be able to, you know, just knock off a couple quick shots and stay on target no yeah. matter what. And again, you'll you'll see on the videos we post that um, that we were more than we were more than accurate at, at, at multi target, you know, and we were more than you know I was going from, you know, let's say fifty yards, twenty five yards, to ten yards pretty quick with this weapon system because, you know, th this really helps manage that, that recoil. Awesome. You know, now the weight of the gun. Yeah, it does a lot with that managing recoil. Again, that's why I said if you're a 110 pound guy, this might not be the gun for might you. Might not be that perfect yeah. match, but, right? But yeah. do a sit up and save your money. And <laughs> there we go. And, and buy this gun because <laughs> lift some ammo cans, right? You know, and, and, these, and these are and these are time tested. These guns have been around since you know the, the Korean War style, you know, uh, era. And now in the dark, I'm not gonna lie, in the dark, in the dirt. I rather take about take apart an AR, sure, because that bulk air group's sure. easier. This has got a little bit more complicated moving, and you know yeah. stuff stuff fits a little bit better. But you know, take your time, get to know the weapon system. Yep, take it apart, clean it a bunch of times, and it and it becomes just as easy as any weapon system. Yeah, I, you know, I, I I look, I don't want to sound like we're just, you know, ura men for mm -hmm. for Springfield, but you know, there's there's not many. There's not much bad you can say about this no, gun. It is a no. cool gun for what it's for what it's made for. Yeah, and this is not a thousand yard gun. No, don't let 308 tr trick you. Yeah, but they did. They didn't invent this gun to shoot for a thousand yeah. yards. They they invented this gun for fellers like me to kick down the door and shoot bad guys, mm -hmm. or fellers like you to shoot at a shoot at a hog. Go get a hog or hunt with it. And yep. it's a beautiful gun. They put rails over the place. You can put whatever you want on it. You know. Again, if you're gonna ask me, I'm gonna say some sort of red dot. We love this. Uh, we love this uh, Venom here. 
but yeah. uh, put whatever you want that you feel comfortable acquiring with, but you don't need that magnification. Yeah, and I was just going to say, touching on the magnification piece, <coughs> what I thought was cool about it, me and John are both from Wisconsin. We live in Wisconsin. And uh, <laughs> go pack and go, obviously. <laughs> but one thing to think about here is I talk to a lot of hunters, and most of these guys, you never have a shot outside of 100, 150 yards. And the vast majority of shots that I've talked to hunters about, they take within 50 yards or so. Well, what's the most legendary Wisconsin hunting gun? It's a 30 30. Yeah. Right? Because it's a big lumbering round that'll knock through, that'll knock through the thick vegetation we have up yep. here. And this, this gun will do the same thing. It's easy to take up with you, take up the tree stand with you. It's not, it's not overloading. You know, again, it's not the lightest gun, but this Archangel stock is is light and magical. I, I yeah. love this thing. You know, you can you can make it as small as you want to make it. You know, and uh, you'll you'll get rounds off with this. And you'll you'll kill deer with this real yeah. good, real good with this. Awesome. Now, a couple other things I was going to touch on too. I mean, when you were talking about your uh, your DMR class, yeah, stuff like that. Um, Something that's kind of neat is that this is obviously not the only version of this rifle that's available. There's target versions, there's scout versions, there are long range versions, and there's even one that is now made in a 6.5. Yes. Now, in your experience, did you ever get a chance to run like a, I believe it's like a Mark 14, which is the, the military version, the EBR type version of this uh, rifle? I did it. I, I, yeah. shot, I shot the... the the, the plain Jane kind of navy issued M14. Okay. With a with a Unertal and a Leopold scope. Okay. And you know it was about that time when when snipers were shooting the you know when I went through sniper school we were shooting Unertal scopes and we yeah. we switched over quick to uh, Leopold. Yeah. I think there were still Unertals on on the M14s which was which was fine. You know, yeah. With the mill dots and um, and then when I when I got into my unit and, and matured a little bit uh, I was I was given a a, a Solcom two. You know, and uh, loved it. Cool. Loved, loved everything about it. I don't have. This isn't the greatest review because I don't have much bad to say about yeah, this. Yeah, well, there, and know. that's not a bad thing. I mean, no. the thing is, you know, if it's a rifle that did its job and got you home over and over again, I mean, that's Absolutely. the most important thing. Absolutely. And I mean, I can say just coming from the civilian standpoint, it's built very well. You know, I. Let's see. We had. I'm trying to think of a round count that we would have had on it so far, but. We fed this thing about every type of ammunition you could imagine in a 308 on the range with different shooters, absolute crap conditions. Not a, not a single malfunction. No malfunction and, whatsoever. And it was December 1st. It was 33 degrees and pouring rain. Out, yeah. Right. So, it <laughs> yep. was, so we put this gun in. We got it dirty. And, it, you know, we, we, we made this gun earn its, earn its reputation. And yes. it absolutely did that for us. Yeah. Now, a couple different things that we always like to go over, too, is what do you get in this package, for instance? So, um, I know there was, I believe it was a 10-round box mag that came with it from Springfield. We got a couple mags from the range in there, so. <laughs> All right, so we got the 20-round 20, 20 big mag. Yep. Now, for a CQB application, it's not super necessary. It actually almost gets a little bulky, mm -hmm. you know. Now, now that's just, just, just my opinion. Sure. You know, I... I I know you wanted me to shoot with this, and I yes. like I like that smaller mag. Yeah. Now the smaller mag is is awesome, but it is, in my opinion, hard to put in. And in a tactical situation, you really got to be comfortable putting this kind of magazine, you know. In you know now, un under under no duress, that's pretty easy. But in, mm -hmm. in a in a tactical situation, when you're when you're, you know, when you have reduced dexterity in your fingers, yeah, you know, this might not be the magazine to carry. And that's one thing I was going to touch on, and I mean. Like I said, I'm not the guy that's most experienced with this platform. Use a lot more in terms of like ARs, uh, scars, brands, stuff like that. Those are the types of guns I really like to shoot over the years. And that obviously uses kind of just like your regular stoner style, push the button, drop the mag type yep. idea. Yep. This was a challenge for me to get used to, especially if I was trying to push myself to move faster. Uh, manipulating that smaller magazine, and that was one of the things I liked uh, the larger magazine for. Is yes. it, it gave me a little bit more area to actually grab on and get things done. Yep. And uh, that's from our buddy Jake over at MGS Firearms that was actually able to get this rifle in for us on transfer to from Springfield. So as always, thanks to MGS. We no, appreciate no, if you're it. shooting under range, I yeah. mean, if you're shooting no, under range, fine. you know, off, off a table. Yep. This is that's makes perfect. Sense. This is makes sense because because yeah. it gives you a better a better profile. Yep. You know, but. If you can legally shoot this bigger magazine, which let's pray that we all can shoot it soon for, yeah. a, for a long time, <laughs> you know th this is the, this is the way to go. You get you get the capacity, and you get a little more meat to grab onto while you're doing your changes. Exactly. Okay. 
Yep, I totally agree with that. Well, cool. you, ask, you ask ask any gun guy. Yeah. And, and, and if you're gonna buy one gun, mm-hmm. this isn't the gun to buy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, you could buy you could buy a gun that. Hey, you know, you hear you hear that window break at three in the morning. Mm-hmm. If you're grabbing a single gun, this yeah. might not be it because this is a big hefty gun. Yeah. You know? But if you are a gun guy and you appreciate the the history and the lineage of, of a weapon system, yeah. This is the greatest thing. This is the greatest thing Springfield's ever built. Yeah. You know? And I'm a huge Springfield nineteen eleven fan. Yes. But this might be the coolest thing. This Archangel edition might be the coolest yeah. thing Springfield's ever built. <laughs> in my opinion. And I, I'm a you know, I am a massive M fourteen fan and I'm even a bigger Archangel fan. This 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 thing impressed me from the second I took it out of the box. Yeah. You know, and, and played with it. And we shot the hell out of it, and it, it, it you know, it, it ate just through, did its it, job. It ate through the crap, <laughs> the crap rolls we were putting in it. Yep. It ate right through them, so. Yeah. It was fun, and I mean, for, again, coming from a perspective of not having a whole lot of experience with the platform, it was so easy to control, very easy to just get double taps on targets. Mm-hmm. You just, you know, and like I said, for me, I'm just a regular gun guy that likes to shoot rounds, just have fun with it, and I can only imagine how proficient you could become with well, this rifle. You know, <laughs> how, how many people, when I when I introduced this at, at that last range, yeah. I said, hey, this is a 308, this is a cool gun. How many people said, eh, it's not for me. You know, yeah. it's, you know what, or, you know, or, or they tough guy, they kind of backed up, they got my shoulders, or, you know. Yeah. And then they, they see me shoot it, and then people are lined up to shoot it. Yes. You know, we had Tiffany Baker, yep. you know, 115 pound, five foot girl, yeah. shot the hell out of this gun, and she had a biggest smile on her face, she loved it, she shot it well. Yes. You know, so, you know, again, if, if you take anything from this, from this review, this gun is not a scoped rifle gun. No. Right? Now, I'm not a big, you know, people are gonna, people are gonna get mad at me for saying this, but I'm not a big iron sight fan. Yeah. Right? If you got the ability to put a put an optic on your gun, put an optic on your gun. Yeah. But sure. don't don't spend too much money on optic. Buy a nice, easy to use red dot that where you put that red dot bullet skull and man, you'll have yeah. fun with this gun all day. Oh yeah. Yep, just keep it functional. Yep. 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 <laughs> cool. Maybe even a forward grip. Yeah. If, if you like that kind. Of, no, I was thinking. You know, when I was shooting, I'm not really a forward grip guy. But yeah, this hefty gun, it might have. It might have. You know. That was one thing that I personally thought to myself, or I would have liked that. Yep. And you know, with it being an actual <laughs> standard size rifle, 16 inch barrel, you don't have to worry about the obviously the SBR regulations or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, again, across the board, just a great package. Um, this handle's got a big steel lug in it, you know, so it, that's not going nowhere. Yeah. Like anything Springfield makes, it's well made. Yeah. You know, you beat the hell out of this gun. This gun's made. This is a combat rifle. Yeah. Right, so it's made to have some dumbass Marine drop down the stairs a few times, which I probably have, but, <laughs> you know, so uh, cut that out. Cut, yeah. <laughs> cut that part out. But, you know, I, I could talk. I, I literally, I, I love this gun. Yeah. And if I talk too much on it, I, I'm going to cheapen how much you know, they're going to think Springfield's paying us to say this shit. Yeah. It, it is an awesome shooting gun. Yeah. It was accurate. And now we were shooting in a CQB environment. Yep. You know, and we never left, let's say, 100 yards. Right? No, never but, outside of 100. But so. this gun was yeah. sub-minute with yeah. this red dot at 100 yards. Oh, yeah. Which for us, for me, that's as good as I shoot. Yeah. Right? I'm not out shooting it anyway, so yep. they can make this gun better, but I'm not shooting it better. Yeah. You know, and I shoot the hell out of some guns. You know? Oh, yeah. So, I, I could not be happier with this gun. Um, again, if you have to buy one gun, I can't say this is the gun to buy. Yeah. But if you're a gun guy, if you don't own this gun, you can't consider yourself a gun guy. Right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh, for right. sure. If you got if you got a few if you got two thousand bucks in your pocket, you don't yeah. own this gun, you're doing something that, wrong. Well, right? just coming from that aspect of it too, you know, after having the opportunity to actually use it, go out and shoot it, that created more of a love for this platform than I could ever have imagined. You know, now it's like, I'm like, okay, well, I might have to figure out how I can pick one of these up and just bring it to every range day just because I had so much fun shooting it. And everyone else who touched it just loved it. So, you know, at least, like you said, maybe not for an everyday thing or even for their hunting rifle, but just for something that's absolutely fun to shoot. Absolutely fun to shoot. Yeah. And and you know, you know, now that, that, you're in my world. You talk mm-hmm. to my sniper friends. You know, you know that that gas gun technology is getting to the point where where you can feel comfortable at that thousand yards. Oh yeah, right. Yep. You know, even five, ten years ago, it's a bolt gun all day. Yeah. Where you can feel comfortable with a six five. Yes. In, in a gas gun. So, so if you're an accuracy guy, again, this isn't the accuracy guy gun. Yeah. This is a CQB gun, but the M14 platform, mm-hmm. you shoot a thousand yards all day with that gun. 
Yeah. It is a, or eight, let's say 800 yards, we'll name it that. Yeah. It's a, it's a yeah. beautiful, beautiful, beautiful setup. Uh, you know, the guts haven't changed for 30 years because mm-hmm. don't change them. There's yeah. no reason to change them. It's shit, shit, it's perfect, you know? So, exactly. you know, this gun is like a Cadillac. It's big. Mm-hmm. It's lumbering. It's comfortable. And it shoots outstanding. Nice. Outstanding. Very cool. Well, John, how about this? I know we were over at iCombat in Waukesha the other day. They were kind enough to open their doors to us and uh, just have us talk about, you know, just different home defense situations, other type of situations you might run into when you're using a rifle. And I know, for instance, there were different, you know, situations you had in combat where you were using this rifle, um, but we were able to kind of show how you might run into it in a home use. You hear somebody upstairs running around and uh, how you might want to approach a situation like that with a rifle like this. So, what, what's this barrel length? This one's about a 16 inch. You know, 16 yeah. inch barrel. You know, that, that's, that's, you can maneuver, you can open doors yeah. with an index gun, you yeah. know, with, 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 this, with this length. You can make it smaller. Um, hey everybody, it's Patrick here and John Matter from Applied Tactical Training Academy and the Tap Rack Bang Podcast. Today, we are bringing you a video from the iCombat facility in Waukesha, Wisconsin. It's one of three iCombat facilities in the Midwest. And uh, they were kind enough to open their doors to let us film this video to highlight the Springfield Armory M1A platform. Now, this is the CQB platform in the Archangel, Archangel stock. And uh, we have a Venom uh, Vortex red dot on here too. Now, John, this platform, you've had quite a bit of experience with it overall. Can you give us a little preview about you know what we're going to see here today and what sort of scenarios we're putting together? This is an outstanding gun. It has the firepower of a 308, obviously. A little bit less, a little bit less uh, energy coming out, about 2,500 feet per second, which is more than enough energy to, to put a bad guy down or put a deer down. Um, it is very manageable. The recoil is outstanding on this weapon system. Uh, I had the, the opportunity to go and shoot M14s at a sniper style class uh, while I was a sniper in the Marine Corps. And uh, I got very familiar with this with this this type of weapon system. Uh, while in Afghanistan, I shot uh, this guy's little brother called the Solcom 2. And then I had the opportunity a few months ago to start shooting this uh, Archangel. And it is a beautiful gun. If this was about 2,000 years ago, this would be a Viking axe. It is the coolest gun you can shoot. And uh, I had a great time shooting it. And looking forward to talking more about it. All right, awesome. Well, we're gonna hit the. Field. Hey everyone, Patrick here at iCombat Waukesha. We're gonna break down the scenario for you. This is mainly a home defense scenario. John hears someone moving around the house at night, grabs the SOCOM 16 CQB and gets to work. And as you can see here, the bad guy's armed. John then engages, and that 308 round is absolutely devastating at close range. Now, also you can see the weapon system is easy to manipulate as you're going down hallways, turning corners, walking up and down stairs. It's compact enough to efficiently execute these movements indoors. Now on the flip side, if this were a military or a law enforcement situation, John would be part of a team clearing buildings, for example. Again, the CQB utilizes the devastating 308 round. It's easy to manipulate and control, but there's another benefit that John's displaying here. Say your team's bounding structure to structure, John reaches a high point on the building. The SOCOM 16 CQB is still very effective at distance, so it allows him to provide effective overwatch for his team. Now, here's a live fire scenario. We're also showing ease of manipulation again while moving and how easy the weapon is to keep on target in the right hands. Again, now, now to, to be honest, do you want to shoot a 308 inside your house? Let's say we live here in Milwaukee and that, that bolt's going to go somewhere. That's a, the one downside with right. it, where it's like, I look at that just as a gun guy and a, a defense-only type shooter, and I'm like, ooh, that's a lot of bullet. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of cartridge to be using in, indoors anywhere you for know, me. As, as, <laughs> some, as some people know, we, uh, we own ATTA. We do a lot of police training, yep. and police ask me all the time, is, is this the right gun to kick doors with? And, and for police applications, I say no for that yeah. reason, because that round's going to go somewhere, that 308 round's going to end up, you know, God forbid... It ends up being your neighbor's dog, right? Yeah. yeah. So or worse. You know, so yep. so you know like, again, if if you're gonna buy a gun, mm-hmm. you know if you're if you're a brand new gun guy, this might not be the gun for you. Sure. But if you're a brand new gun guy who ends up loving guns, you will own this gun eventually. Eventually, right? yeah. It's, it's a beautiful. <laughs> you will have one in your arsenal. Gun. That's for sure. And honestly, 
you know, I had to say that 308 thing so it doesn't sound like I'm I'm, I'm the huge, you know, soul calm homer. <laughs> but, you know, but, hey, if a bad guy's in your house, put his ass down, right? Yeah, that's put right. Put his ass down and, uh, you know... As long as you're as long as you're accurate. Yep. Right. But exactly. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of bolt for that little 16 inch barrel. Yeah. And you'll see in our videos, it's manageable. It yes. really is manageable. For sure. Awesome. Well, as always, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is Patrick and John from the Tap Rack Bang Podcast and Applied Tactical Training Academy here in Wisconsin. And uh, this was just a quick review of the M1A CQB. Uh, if there's any questions, as always, feel free to write them down in the comments. We're happy to get back to you. And uh, as always, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you join us here. Uh, keep an eye out for the podcast episodes and everything along those lines. We'll have a lot more content coming out with Springfield and uh, with lots of other fun stuff that we get to get our hands on. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep bringing out the content, and uh, you just keep following along. It'll be worthwhile. Follow us by SoCom. <laughs> Brian Little. <laughs>